and opinions expressed by callers, guests, and hosts do not necessarily reflect those of the Black Talk Radio Network and Black Talk Media Project. Black Talk Radio is new black media for the new millennium. Right, welcome in to the Mind, Body, and Spirit radio show. Tonight we are here. It is the very first day of March. 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 It is the first day of March. So we are going, getting ready to go into spring. February is over. And it is uh, the end of the 2017 Black History Month, and uh, but here at Mind, Body, and Spirit, we have what we call African Spirit, whereas um, each each um, Wednesday we will share uh, maybe a biography or or a historical tidbit about our history. So be sure to stay tuned. We will. Uh, always have our African Spirit segment um, in the last hour of the show. So you can um, always tune in and listen in to that. Tonight, um, we're going to talk about uh, Thomas Thomas Sekera. I always have a little difficulty practice uh, pronouncing his name. But, uh, my goodness, what a uh, phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal brother. Um, and also, to, uh, let me see, was it yesterday? I think it was yesterday. Was it yesterday or today? I think today. Today is Harry Belafonte's birthday. Oh, my God. Oh, they like a man you want to go home. <laughs> hell, hell. Hell, They like a man you want to go home. Uh-oh. Somebody else trying to join in on a day of. Hey, we don't need your day my oh, goodness, yeah, Dale, Dale, Mr. Mr. Dale's birthday, Harry Belafonte. I had, a, okay, I had an opportunity to meet Harry Belafonte at um, University of Memphis when I lived in Memphis and was a student there. Student there, he came to um, speak, and I just love his voice. It is just something oh, about wow. his voice. And uh, yes, the, his, his uh, verbiage and command of the English language, I just love to hear him speak. Harry Belafonte. It is his birthday, so happy born day to Harry Belafonte. Um, you know, people say that uh, Harry Belafonte um, did some great work in terms of funding the civil rights movement. People like him and um, Brother Dick Gregory are reported to have uh, actually put money into uh, the organizing and helped fund some of uh, the movements that were going on. And so uh, we need more people like that. I don't know how much they ever put into the movement or who they paid it out to. I, I don't know. But that's why I'm saying it's reported. I have not had an opportunity to interview Harry Belafonte to ask him how much did he donate if he even would like to share that <clears throat> but if anyone has any information you can always call in and share that information with us we'd be happy to hear it um but yeah we need more people to uh, find some of the activists i mean some real people that's not going to come in and try to like change the agenda to something else some people that's already down with the movement and are willing to just fund what some of the activists are doing. But if you have some ideas, of course, share those ideas because um, the young people <clears throat> and some of the older people, they do need their guidance. Definitely need their guidance. But they don't guidance, need it to so. have the agenda kidnapped. Absolutely. Hijacking 
and kidnapping. That's why I'm not the mm-hmm. The movement. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, let me see. I think we do have a clip uh, from Harry it's Belafonte. Namaste. Oh, excuse me? Namaste. Namaste. Namaste to you. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I'm here. Yes, I'm like Namaste. To- Can you hear me? I'm here. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Namaste uh, to you. Uh, Namaste. Uh, 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 uh. So if people want to call in and share your thoughts or comments uh, tonight, please do. Tonight is... Um, open spirit and soul talk so we have open lines for you to call in and just share what's on your mind body and spirit and um, we'll be more than happy to hear it if it's something that's uh, interesting if it's not you know um, we're going to get you off the line quickly because we're not trying to hear all of that anymore um, I used to sit and entertain a lot of talk from people a lot of rhetoric but now I just I'm older now and I just number one I don't have to and number two I don't have to so right. um Right. Yeah, I, just, I don't. I don't. Uh, but you can call in if you have something to share. 866-510-9028 is the number to dial. And then you can press uh, star star and we'll get you in. You can also um, listen to us on YouTube. You can always log on to Black Talk Media Network. And while you log on to blacktalkmedianetwork.com to listen to the show, you can always go to the Black Talk Media Project and donate there. And uh, I think if you donate $25, you, you'll receive a Black Talk Radio Matters t-shirt. We may still have some of those t-shirts. And uh, also you can sign up for the uh, BTR, the uh, Black Social Experience. If you enjoy Facebook, Twitter, you definitely enjoy um BTR, if you're interested in uh, having some conversations with uh, some people with similar tastes and thoughts. So do that as we get started with our show here tonight at Mind, Body, and Spirit. Uh, We should have uh, Kier Harris, uh, the mother who was arrested uh, for homeschooling her children. We'll have a representative uh, from her group that's helping her come on and give us an update on this story because I just think this is just the craziest thing I ever heard in my life, um, someone being arrested for homeschooling. But, I mean, I can understand the whole reasoning behind the this, this system wanting to do that. But, I mean, just to actually go out and actually uh, uh, enact this whole ter- terror, uh, this terror on this, this young mother is just crazy and separating her from her children. So uh, we are looking forward to having her come on. She was going to come on last week, um, but she was unable to due to some unforeseen circumstances. But um, we will be able to receive an update tonight. But before we go into that update, uh, Scotty, if you're there, uh, can we play that uh, Harry Belafonte clip? This is Harry Belafonte on post on a post race post racial society. Everybody remembers um, people talking about after Obama was elected in a post racial society. <sighs> but, uh, huh. yeah. The idea that so, we're in a post racial this clip. Harry Belafonte moment is uh, is beyond humor. Uh, it's, it's, it's 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 such a a careless and a very calculated. Uh, a part of our vocabulary, mostly uh, revealed by media and pursued by media. The truth of the matter is, is that all of those things that were quite evident that we fought against in the 40s and 50s, starting long before that period with what we took on when we took on the Second World War. It wasn't just that there was a mighty fascist army on the horizon that we had to, to, to uh, resist and defeat. It was also a philosophy, both on democracy and philosophy on race. Hitler was about pure Aryan existence, that beyond the blonde, blue-eyed, uh, a genetic creature, all else in the, in the universe was inferior. And uh, we all had a vested interest in the, how popular that philosophy was emerging, not only throughout Germany and Europe, but capturing the imagination of, of a place how popular, popular in America was no small player. We had these segregationist laws. 
apartheid in South Africa learned how to design its own system based upon the laws that we had been practicing here and had created here through the abolition of slavery and the Civil War and then what happened and how the, the nation began to design how it would legally control the black people who were being released from the chains of slavery. So those people say, well, it's not like it was back in the 50s. You people had a better time of it than we do. I think you're absolutely right because everything was quite visible. Now all this is underground. Now you go through so much fighting these ghosts. And a lot of people have come to say, even the civil rights movement is a thing of the past. Well, civil rights is never a thing of the past. Uh, civilized, civilized society cannot prevail. The pursuit and the hunt for the utopian democracy is forever forcing and requiring the citizens be alerted to what's happening to human rights and civil rights. And it's a constant and should be a constant. That's what democracy is about. All right, all right. And that was uh, Harry Belafonte speaking about race and post racial society and I remember when um, some of the young people maybe about mm, let's see, maybe about 10 years ago a lot of the young people were saying well racism is over we don't experience that anymore man have some of them experienced a wake up call and unfortunately uh, that's what it takes sometime and um just apropos of that, um, uh, let me let me welcome in Delta. What's up, Delta? What's going on down there in the Gulf? You, you Mardi Gras? You having a good Mardi Gras time there? Yeah, in, we the day um, yesterday was our last day of our fat we didn't hear anything you said, Delta. So you know you have to talk into your mic and you can't be twisting your head. Okay, I said, to do other things. Mm -hmm. I said, Fat Tuesday is over. It was ended yesterday. Yeah. I said, now we all uh, drank a lot and had a good time. And oh. now we got to go to the church and confess our sin. It is that <laughs> Oh, yes, yes. You're going to confess your sins. Y'all been I was sinning. So wrong. You just been I was sinning. So <laughs> oh, Lord, I forgive you. Everybody go in the day and get the big old black cross on their face today. Oh, really? The really? cross have to be black. Think about that. Everything they say is evil, uh, the, uh, it always got to be black. Mm. I just thought about that. Yeah. Just now. Yeah, yeah, and, and it's just the whole uh, perception and um, was uh, promoted to us. So, but I tell you one thing, um, and I, I do want to mention this story before uh, we have our caller come in. A couple of things I want to mention: Mahershala Ali, um, who who was uh, in Hidden Colors. I loved him actually in uh, House of Cards and uh, Luke Cage, but he was uh, this year he was in Hidden Colors and Moonlight. Hidden figures. And hi what, what did I say? Hidden Colors. Yes, uh, you know, I'm thinking twice. about Tyreek and she. <laughs> hidden, <laughs> know. hidden Colors. Okay, look, I, I see know. these people have me all crazy and mixed up saying <laughs> hidden figures, and hidden, hidden <laughs> fences, and <laughs> all this stuff. Yeah. All talk, but anyway. Uh, Yes, he was in Hidden Figures and Moonlight, and he is the first, what people are calling the first Muslim to win uh, Best Supporting Act Actor for his role in Moonlight. And then, of course, Viola Davis won Best Supporting um, Actress in her category, which she should have been nominated for uh, Best Actress in my yeah. opinion, and yes, yeah, she should have yeah. been nominated for Best Actress. Denzel Washington, of course, did not win 
um, best actor, and he damn sure should have won. Denzel been in the movie business forever. He's been an actor. Yeah. He's paid his dues. Um, he d- directed movies. I mean, even what was that? Uh, Antoine Fisher. I think that was his first di- directorial right, debut. That was his first one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but see, I mean, we've been knowing about Denzel for years, and then all of a sudden he came on the radar of, I guess, quote unquote, mainstream Hollywood. But I mean, we've been down with Denzel. I mean, Denzel been in about 30 or 40 movies like Samuel Jackson. Samuel Jackson right. should have uh, won at least two or three Oscars by now. But see, these little new people, like this Casey Affleck, who's Ben Affleck's brother, who has also some sexual uh, allegations uh, that have been uh, um, reported against him. But he was still able to be nominated for an Oscar, but see, everybody was hating on Nate Parker. Everybody didn't know he went. He didn't. Nate Parker went to court and was acquitted. This man still has these accusations levied against him, but he was able to uh, be nominated for an Oscar and win. And that was Walk like away. an Amazon Prime movie. Uh, Manchester, ah! whatever it is, uh, well, I don't even know the name of Manchester by the Sea or something. So anyway, so he wins this 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 award, uh, and he says uh, Denzel. He learned how to act from Denzel. Well, I know the hell you did, and you should have told him that you feel bad. You should have said just like what's her name? What's the lady name? Azale Adele. You should have said just yeah, like yeah. Adele said. Um, Beyonce I don't deserve it. it. I don't deserve it. You should have said, I don't deserve it. Let me give this to Denzel, because Denzel looked a little pissed in that audience to me, if you ask me. Yep. Yep. And rightfully so, because he should have won it. Rightfully so. Don't opinion. try to hide it. In my opinion. Yeah. Even though I don't care anything about all those stupid awards anyway, and I'm glad that we as a people are they, starting to have coming. our own awards. Right. Right. We have our own you awards, see what they... and you receive accolades from your community exactly give yourself mm-hmm. accolades forget that because Denzel know he the best he the best yeah. he is the best so meet them mm-hmm. to tell them D- tell Delta them did you watch the Oscars is. no I didn't watch them at all I um, sure did no, you didn't miss anything um, the only reason why I watched it is because I, I knew that Viola would, would win and I was hoping that Denzel would win um, and since the young people, black Twitter had come up with that Oscar so white last year and now Oscar so black this year hashtag, so um, I did watch it. But let me say this quickly. Um, this whole case in, um, where is this, Columbia, Georgia, with this little boy being shot. Okay, teenager, 17, year, 17 years of age, 17, shot in Columbia County. Um, he was going to, let me see, what's this, what's this little boy's name again? Um, goodness, let me see, what is his name? I think it's like Jordan, let me see if it's in this order. Middleton, his last name is uh, Middleton, uh, what's his first name? Jordan, yeah, Jordan, Jordan Middleton. So, <clears throat> just to make the story quick, uh, uh, uh concise, um, he went to visit this girl. She invited him to her home. The, fa- the father says that he heard a noise because the dog was barking. And so the dog, dog was barking at the guest room. So the father armed himself and said, come out, who's at, whoever is in the house. Um, I'm armed. So come out. He goes to investigate. In one news report, the statement reads that the father the father said that the boy, Jordan, ran out of the guest room closet and then he shot him. But the boy was found in the foyer of the home, the foyer of the home. So, <clears throat> I don't know, because I never shot anybody. I've never been in a situation like that. But um, then another report said that the daughter was upstairs. The boy, the uh, Jordan Mid- uh, Middleton, was downstairs in the bathroom, in the, in the guest room, and he came out into the hallway, and the father shot him. It just really all sounds kind of strange to me. I don't know. I'm not an investigator, but I will say this: 
it's unfortunate that the poor little boy was shot and killed in the home like that. That is so, so, so sad. And I know we used to sneak out and do all kinds of things. But I tell you, I'm just really wondering, did this little boy go over to a little white girl's house and the dad figured out this was a little black boy. He caught the black boy in the bedroom with his daughter and ended up shooting and killing him. Because it's just been too many young black boys being found uh, dead and somebody's claiming that, th that this person uh, was burglarized in their house. Just like the story a couple of weeks ago in St. Louis with the young man being accused of burglarizing the, uh, uh, this cop's home. But come to find out after investigation, they were all friends. Looked like they were very close friends. And apparently it looks like the cop's house was like a hangout spot for these young boys. So right. there, there was no, no real burglary. Once all of this was investigated, these people, they, they lied. And so the boy ends up dead. The young man ends, ends up dead. And so... I just say we Sounds need to so really suspicious. be careful. Talk to your children, people, a little bit mm -hmm. more. And we said we were going to have a show on that because I tell you, I come across some really, <clears throat> oh, excuse me, some really rude children. Oh, y'all got some Ooh. rude children. Lord, how mm. nice. Oh, goodness. That's a mess. But uh, mm, we're, we're going to pray for everybody and we're going to work on this. We're going to work on this. But right now, um, I think we have our guest. Uh, let's see. This is the mind, body, and spirit. Um, how are you? Welcome in. Hello, Sister Hashiro. My name's Franklin Red, and I am uh, pleased to be with you this evening. Uh, I'm the chairman of the Homeschool Committee uh, for DPCC, and um, unfortunately, uh, Kiari uh, this evening. Uh, cannot be available, but but I'm here hopefully to um, at least provide some light uh, on this matter that are um, being dealt with in Buffalo with reference to Ms. Harris and her uh, children. Well, we want to thank you so very much for taking the time, and, and, and please uh, thank Sister Harris for us, for um, allowing you to come on and share her story, Mr. Reed, because um, I tell you, when we read about this, it's just it's just almost unbelievable but then it's not too incredulous because we've been hearing about stories similar to uh, cares about people having their children illegally taken from them so um, if you could just update us and uh, we also have uh, uh, Delta on the line her name is uh, Dorothy Dunning so she has a similar experience uh, to Kiara's but her her grandchildren are the uh, children that are uh, involved in her case subsequently victimized by the system as well, just like Ms. Harris. So if you could just update uh, for our listeners, they may not be as familiar with her story, you know, they may have uh, uh, kind of forgotten, and we want to make sure that people are aware of this story and, and do whatever we can to assist. Certainly. I, I um, first just give a little background for those who might not be totally aware. Um, Ms. Harris, back on December 7th, uh, 2016, executed the appropriate paperwork with the Buffalo Public School System to homeschool her children. And the documents were, you know, exactly the way they needed to be. Um, everything was done, you know, decent and in order. And somewhere around the uh, 14th of December, she was contacted by CPS initially to um, come in, uh, inspect her home, which was something that, you know, wasn't typical for a homeschooling family to have to endure. And um, Ms. Harris and, and the uh, caseworker, I guess over a, a five or six day period, uh, had numerous conversations regarding the requirement to um, inspect her home and ultimately the request went from inspecting the home to also reviewing the home instruction plan that uh, Ms. Harris uh, was to you know deliver to the district within a, a, a four-week period after the notice of uh, uh, intent to homeschool and 
those two things running parallel just you know they 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 they're out of sequence. You know the the sequence for homeschooling in Buffalo, and actually in, according to New York State law, once a parent decides to homeschool, they can actually pull their child out of school, and then within 14 days, they have to notice the district of their intent to homeschool. So you have this period where you may find something going on with your children that you know is alarming to you, or you just may make the decision that it's a better you know course of action. In Ms. Uh, Harris' situation, she had tried number, a number of options in the Buffalo School District. She had um, attempted to, you know, transfer students to better schools, and she just lost faith in that process. And when she submitted her paperwork, there should have been a 10-day period where the district had to actually send to her documents that would detail the whole uh, homeschooling experience and the uh, completion of the forms for the home instruction plan. Once she would have received that 10 days after filing, which would have been the 17th, she would have had, uh, you know, 15 days to, I'm sorry, four weeks to complete those documents, send them back to the district. And if she required help, the district by state law were to provide her assistance. So in that period of time, once Ms. Um, Harris had submitted her documents, before the 10-day period had even expired, she was being contacted by CPS uh, with reference to inspecting her home, which, you know, shouldn't have happened. And, you know, the, the process ensued such that in, in January, uh, Ms. Harris, you know, on an evening going home, um, was pulled over, um, the police officers, you know, and the social workers had uh, requested that she provide them with the information where her children were. Um, she, you know, like any mother would do it or, or any parent would do in that situation would, you know, with, without knowing of any prior circumstance in terms of um, the children being taken, would, would ask questions of the police, you know, what is this about, what are you doing, you know, how is this possible, wait a minute, I have my documents, everything was signed properly. Uh, the police officers in that setting, and that, you know, and I'm paraphrasing, but the police officers in that setting said, look, we're here with a court order to um, take the children. So she, you know, like any parent would do, resisted to tell them where they were. They arrested her. And um, she ended up in this sequence now where she's not seen her children for almost two months. Um, the children were taken from her custody um, at, at a subsequent event where... She um, was searched by the police in front of her children. She was, oh. you know, uh, humiliated. I mean, they lifted her shirt and pants and, uh, oh. in front of her 11-year-old son and 8-year-old daughter, uh, had taken the children away and, you know, put her in jail. So she was arrested in front of her children, which is a very traumatizing thing. The children were taken from her custody and placed in actual institutional foster care facility outside of the city of Buffalo, that facility within its two or two weeks of um, working with, you know, having custody of children actually changed the children's school district from their school, from the school they were in prior to the homeschooling um, registration to actually schools that are outside the city of Buffalo um, in an adjacent city. Um, so the children were institutionalized through the foster care system, and then they were dislodged mm -hmm. from the environment that they had familiarity with and were not allowed for the first five days to even have contact with their mother. Now, the son is 11, the daughter is 8 years old. And at, at a subsequent family court hearing where the original judge was not on the bench, substitute judge awarded temporary Kinsman custody to Mrs. Harris' mother, and Ms. Harris was restricted from, one, using her Facebook, and two, she was restricted from having contact with her children uh, except for two hours a week through yet another agency, you know, the Catholic Charities Agency, where she would get two hours a week um, supervised visit. Um, and when her first visit happened, um, that visit was was ended. You know, she got maybe 10 minutes into the visit, and the caseworker, because of a um, newspaper article in the local newspaper, the Buffalo Challenger News, which is 
you know, a 50-year-old black female newspaper here in Buffalo, something that her children had access to and, you know, familiarity with. There was an article on the family, and the caseworker said if she would um, bring that into the um, conversation with her children, the the, the uh, actual visit would be terminated. When Ms. Harris asked her, how can you do that based on, you know, what 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 gives you the ability to tell her what she can talk to her children about, they terminated the meeting. So Ms. Harris has um, been through one of the most extreme scenarios that um, you, you could have relative to attempting to homeschool your children where she was accused of, in the first petition of family court, um, things that did not rise be above or even near the level of educational neglect. And, you know, because of lawyering tactics, that motion by the um, Child Protection Services attorney during a subsequent hearing, they withdrew that motion and then inserted a new motion um, that had a much higher level of uh, accusations, um, you know, regarding Ms. Harris, that, but those were all after the date of the original filing for the notice of intent to homeschool. So she's caught in a circumstance where the events after the incident are even worse now that she's dealing with than, you know, the initial accusations that were against us. Now she's facing accusations that on paper rise to the level of, 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 of imminent danger where initially they did not, you know. So we have so a now, that, let, let me ask, let me ask you this. So initially the charge was um, imminent danger of the children because they were not in school. Well, the, the, original, should have, you know, the original charge were in the area of, of educational neglect. Educational neglect. The standard, you know, to take the children. And mm -hmm. she was still, and, you know, all of these contacts initially happened within the period where the district had more of the responsibility on it to provide mm -hmm. to her, you know, um, the initial steps of that changing of the enrollment from a traditional student to that of a homeschool student. And... Um, so, so Ms. Harris initially was dealing with educational neglect, mm -hmm. and under no basis is there, you know, justification for, uh, you know, removal from parental custody. Um, there was nothing that rose to imminent danger for the children. And so now the charges have been compounded to um, endangering the children. Is that correct? Well, well, the, for example, she's in a she's in a case right now regarding um, obstruction charges, you know. So, and that resulted from not turning the children over. But oh, she's in a case where they should have been in jeopardy. So she actually has a um, two straight two two lines of cases that are that are pending now. And one is um, March 10th, where she'll go back into city court. And defend, defend herself from obstruction of, of justice charges for not turning the children in. For and, not you know, surrendering her own children. And, and that's, that's something I think, we, you know, the, the court will have the, um, uh, we, we hope the court would see that, you know, she had done everything she was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. but not to be executed. The point that we've asserted, you know, is the trail of title of the documents. Once those documents were date stamped by the district employee and signed by the district employee, and the district employee provided a letter that indicated that her children were, you know, now homeschooled. Mm -hmm. From that moment forward, she had no reason to believe there was any other thing to do except to provide to the district the home instruction plan, which from the standpoint of the district's role is to just assure that she's complying with the thresholds the state of New York require for homeschooling parents with you know, with reference to the curriculum and the study guide, study course. So it wasn't as if they had anything to approve. They just, you know, at that point had the, I guess, obligation to assure that she was meeting the standards that would keep her children at pace with what the state of New York believes, the, you know, the children should um, at an age level and grade level perform at. Um, and that's with reference to access to the curriculum and, you know, um, having exposure to, you know, the, the coursework that they need. So Ms. Harris 
had no reason to believe after December 7th that there was anything left to do relative to the district except the, you know, intent focus on homeschooling children. And this is a, a mother whose children, she, she, you know, had always been very active in guiding their education. You know, and they, mm-hmm. they had involved in many community organizations, the community celebrations at Kwanzaa, at Kwanzaa they, they, they participated in. They had very articulate, well-mannered, um, well-attended to um, children who, um, you know, Ms. Harris simply wanted to transition them from traditional students because she had lost faith in the education system in Buffalo, which is a system that has struggled tremendously, you know, um, um, she, her two children were in what we call receivership schools that were on, on path, you know, for remediation. And she just lost faith in that. You know, and as a parent, you can't wait for the district to fix itself while your child's clock in terms of getting an education is ticking. So she was, she was what a parent do is not be to provide an education for, the, for her children that um, would, would be meaningful and, and prepare them for, you know, their adults. And instead of her being applauded for taking uh, more responsibility in terms of the education of her children, she has been arrested and have these uh, unreasonable charges levied against her, obstruction of justice because she would not surrender her children. Um, so the light or, or Delta, do you have any questions? Come? Oh, definitely. Could you please share her PayPal account? You know, um, you know. Let me grab. I got to. I got to start grab. I don't want to misstate it. You know. Okay. And this is, is um. There's there's you know a, a fundraising account that um. Uh, I need to get that because so she's incurred. I'm, oh, she's incurred a mountain of legal fees. Yeah, she, I'm she's sure. been. A number of times, and you know, she has legal fees now that that are accumulating. Um, there are certainly efforts to try to help mitigate that, but you know, this is one of those situations where um, she's going to have to, you know, defend herself in court, um, both in family court and in city court. So she has two separate actions that that she's defending against, and those those two actions. Um, you know, she needs uh, legal representation. Um, she, she's recently had to change um, counsel. Um, and, if, and if you go to, um, there's a go. I'm just, I'm just making, I'm just validating the information now. Okay, you know, not a problem. Uh, while he's getting that together, Featherlight or Delta, you have any uh, questions or comments? Delta, I know your stories. Is there any advice that you would like to share? Yes, um, I wanted to say to the um, gentleman, you know, I'm really sorry that the young lady is really going through this, and I will try to push her story every chance I get. I push it on Facebook, on any opportunity that I get, I bring her story up because my heart goes out to her because they, um, they number one goal is really to try to break her. Right. And my heart just go out to her because if they can't get one charge to stick, they're going to come back with another charge. And, um, you know, I've been down that road. I, I had been down the road where my kids was, um, my grandbabies was taken not for uh, the uh, for the school part, but for and foster care. So it's a system that they got set up to destroy the black family. And then, and I feel like that this young woman, she was doing everything in her power um, to try to get the best for her kids, but the, um, they didn't want that, and they don't like it when you question their authority. That. That's the um, number one problem. They feel like she questioned their authority, and they and they just can't stand really a black woman. I hate to say it, questioning their authority. They just don't like it. 
And would you yeah. would you say, um, sir, that this could have uh, may, maybe there's a, a monetary element to this because of districts receiving receiving uh, funds per per pupil at a charter school or a public school. So could this be like, no, that's money walking out the door. We need your child here. I mean, because I'm just trying to figure out how is this justified if she's filed the proper paperwork? Why why is this particular woman, this family, being attacked? Well, you know. Could you share some light in there for us? Yeah, there, there's, there's definitely a financial, you know, reality to this that sets the stage for this to happen. I mean, we're talking about, you know, the protection of union jobs, county budgets, agencies being reimbursed by the federal government. And, you know, when you think about Ms. Harris' situation right now, the Buffalo Public School District is paying the Lackawanna School District to educate the children. And the um, Baker Homes, you know, foster care facility, Baker Homes facility, were paid to house these children for the time that they had the custody there. And that's a fixed price contract, I believe, in the post. Mm -hmm. And now you have a situation where the kids spend three hours a day on a bus, you know, an, an hour going in, an hour going back, plus or minus 10, 15 minutes, um, where transportation is paid for. You know, every aspect of the movement of these children, someone's being paid for it. And the people being paid for it, you know, they're, they're simply saying, hey, I'm doing my job, in my opinion, the same way in Nazi Germany during the, during the 30s and 40s, early 40s, that people, you know, kept those trains running, not looking in the train cars and recognizing what they're doing, you know, or, or not wanting to recognize that what they're doing for the sake of a paycheck is, you know, robbing someone else of their liberty. Um, at this point, we look at how um, the money that's been spent for the courts. I mean, when you look at the caseloads that these these things represent, when, you know, the court system, uh, we have two different cases going. So you have two different judges. You have two different clerks. You have two different officers in the court standing there with the gun being paid. So if you add up the hourly rate that these two young children are creating in terms of as commerce, the economy of this right. thing, even right. the psychology of, a, of an executive of a municipality to sit back and look at shifting from the local tax base by going into the legal authority agreement under the Child Protective Services Program, where you can shift the Child Protection Services cost to a federal reimbursement category by agreeing... What? The provisions that you know um, um, enable that 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 exempt the state to the tax base. Hey, I've held your taxes in line. Your taxes haven't gone up because when the county would have paid for these services, it would have come from local tax dollars. But if you can shift them into a category that allow these these expenses to be reimbursed by the federal government, you've actually created a revenue center, and that then takes a, takes on a life of its own. Because at that point, you know, you have a situation where the profile of the county budget, that is, the way our county administers money, tax revenues, its operation, is predatory to the citizenry who are most vulnerable because if, if that county executive wants to just have the working class, then all they have to do is attach this process to the poor and to, you know, the single mothers and to the communities that, you know, are, are more vulnerable and, and more easily targeted that are already fighting the war against poverty. So this scenario could have easily been remedied, easily. You know, it's easy to look at the documents that have been put online, that the local news, you know, TV stations have placed in their, in their news broadcast, and you can see the district has a date stamp as December 7th, and it's signed by the district employee. And yet these children were, con you know, the mother was contacted before the 10-day period the district had to send her a packet saying, welcome to homeschooling, here's the district resources. I mean, she was told that there was no resources available to her. And this homeschooling thing has been a fight 
in terms of giving parents an option such that if, if, if this district that has not graduated more than 67% um, of its student population in any one year over the last, you know, 40 years, if this district that has, has never graduated more than 30% of its black males in any one wow. year. Wait, so 30% only... The yeah, district has yeah. never graduated over 30% of the black males in the district. Oh, my goodness. In so the district a, of the school. In the district. In the district. Now, in the district. Now, I would tell you over the last five years, in the last, in the last eight years, we've had seven superintendents. Now, the superintendent that we have right now has, has – fought so many things that I've, I'm, I'm just telling you what I've witnessed. I'm not even going to give you conjecture from other people's statements and such. I've watched him encounter the union structure, the bureaucratic, you know, beast in terms of turning this $1 billion district. We spend a billion dollars a year for, for, for 32,000 students. So we're spending... I'm sorry, 33,000 and something. So let's round it up to 34,000. So we have 34,000 students, and I'm rounding it up, that we spend mm -hmm. a billion dollars. That right a now. A billion we, dollars. One billion? One billion so a year. So surely the, 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 the schools should be very high tech and preparing children for coding, um, um, employment, occupations, uh, uh, and coding, and all types of robotics and. It's a high. All of the schools are high tech, right? One billion dollars. Well, no, we we we're a struggling district. That I think thirty five percent of our third graders are at uh, proficiency. So we we are not, you know, where the oh. district should, based on the legacy of how money has been spent. Now, in all fairness, there there is a change that that is happening. But by the time that all comes in place. The children in the classroom today are can't wait for this stuff to happen over time. It, you know, there's wow. there's a psychological paradigm shift that needs to happen. I mean, one of our school board members made reference to um, the his desire in a in a local article that you know when President Obama was still in office that his hope was the president would contract mad cow disease and die, and that the first lady would, you know, in, in, in again, prayer phrasing the statements, I don't want to, you know, be quote, quoted, but you, you can get the comments, that the first lady would basically be disengendered, dehumanized, defeminized, and then sent to live in Africa with a gorilla. And so the context of that really is how, you know, white, white men during slavery, and certainly it, it didn't stop, but during slavery, there was a freedom to um, take take the black female and defeminize her by robbing her of, with decades of rape and abuse, and then rob her of her good economies, and then try to strip her of her humanity, where to even recognize her as a woman, and then send her off to the gorilla. In other words, send her off the plantation to to survive. You know, with that other male counterpart who was also broken down. And so that, that psychology and that mentality was defended where people said that was his constitutional right. Well, if that was his constitutional right, why did the judge in this case tell her that she would lose custody of her children if she got on Facebook again and used her Facebook account? Now, her Facebook account is how this got out. She was fighting this on her own. She, she didn't resist and relent. I mean, she resisted and did not relent even after they arrested her, even after they, they, they did everything they could to break her. She was fighting this on her own. And, and then, in my opinion, in, in her, you know, desperate moment where she said, okay, I've done everything I can do. I'm just going to go to Facebook and I'm going to tell my story. And she told her story. And when you look at Facebook, so when you go to In the Matter of Kiari Harris, that was an account that was set up by some by some people down in, in Brooklyn. And they started creating an archive of everything, the articles, the interviews, so that this stuff would not get lost because she has not stopped fighting. You know, this is a you know young mother um, 
who, you know, loves her children and re- refuses to not only, you know, turn them over, but she's fighting right now. And the things that she's dealing with even today, you know, be the magnitude of some of this stuff prevented her from being able to last week. And this was, you know, last week she was she was very sorry that she just, you know, you reach a point of exhaustion dealing with this lunacy, and you got to fight it 24 hours a day because everyone who comes to her and says, you must have done something wrong, everyone comes to her and says, well, they don't just take the kids for no reason. No, they, they, oh they take them God. for $30 million That's my a year. Story. <laughs> they, take them, they take them for money because it's their job, because you're chattel. We're talking about human trafficking in the modern sense of the diaspora within a county. This is an interagency, intermunicipality, interauthority, almost collaboration that, you know, in that agreement that the county has to, partic- you know, make when, when one of the stipulations, and I'll read, is provision for co- consideration among law enforcement agencies, courts, and human service agencies in the area of child abuse and neglect. They have to make provisions in the rules for these agencies to, to work together. So we're talking about a nation that has never educated its black children, that has never educated its poor. So the rural white community has suffered this. The, rural, the, the urban black community is suffering this. And that middle class has to wake up to the fact that its lifestyle is based on, you know, tax um, um, benefits that derive from shifting this, these, the cost of these agencies to the federal government so now they get lower property taxes or their property taxes don't go up commensurate to what they should based on municipal services, but those municipal services are being offset by this trading of human flesh that, that's our children, that's our babies. And this is a leadership issue. You know, we, we've reached out, you know, we've, we've, we've politely, calmly, rationally reached out, and then we had to say, okay, look, we, 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 we're talking to you. We've, we've pushed. We, we, we pointed to where the problems were. We're not going to stop. We're not so going to stop. Has, it, I, would, is, I, would like to know, I would like to know, has um, like Sheila Jackson Lee been contacted, um, any, any of the uh, Congress people or senators? Because <clears throat> I know that many of the, uh, especially uh, black females uh, of the Congress, uh, were so, so concerned about the Boko Haram girls, girls being taken by Boko Haram, but we have children right here being illegally taken away. Right. And so it seems to me. Exactly. Well, you know, I, I, I believe right now somebody's on staff with some, you know, one of our congressmen, Black Congressional Congress, Congress, Congress I believe that there's someone on staff, I don't care if it's a white congressman, that, mm. you know, this is something we've already made petition with the U.S. Department of Education to come in and investigate. We've already mm-hmm. gone to the uh, mm-hmm. Department of Justice to come investigate. We are okay. certainly inviting any congressional um, committee chairman who wants to go on record. We, we had this great councilman in Buffalo who um, chairs the, the Education Committee. And a couple weeks, you know, last week he convened a meeting, and actually tomorrow there's a session where the Education Committee of the City of Buffalo, last week we were able to um, go there and bring this issue before the city, city council so that it would be of record. You know, the, the first thing is we can't die in the shadows without making a statement, and these venues that are legislative committees are, are platforms for citizens to voice to their government something's wrong. And we had hoped that the commissioner would show up, and he didn't. And we had hoped that the council member would have been able to, you know, intercede with the, with the commissioner and, and the county executive. And the county executive refused to even participate in conversation. You know, the commissioner at least engaged in dialogue on, on some level, I believe, with the, the council member. But, you know, we're trying to engage at every level because in this situation, this, this could, there could have been a political solution, at least for her having the children back. And then mm-hmm. after getting her children back, we can address the systemic problems because there's some s- systemic problems here that we need to shift how we govern. But we don't need to grind it out with the children being outside of the custody of their mother. These, the children can be released tomorrow. 
there's nothing meaningful to the charges that are to them. He did what she's supposed to do. And if there's a congressperson out there, if we have a congressional representative out there that's concerned about this issue, I'm sure it's happening in their district because we're hearing from all over the country. We're hearing from all over our county. We're hearing from all over our city. And, you know, this is something that is a systemic thing. And we need some leadership. And those who are in office, you know, they should feel responsible for this. They should feel personally responsible for these two young children not being with their mother. And they should act. They should move on this. We should, you know, we're, we're reaching out to everybody. And we're reaching out and saying, this, this is what a citizen is going through right now. Yes. Who really wanted to homeschool their children. Now, the legacy of this country not wanting black children educated to the point where they would murder people who taught them to read or they would mm -hmm. kill the reader that was black, we, we have to recognize that there's remnants of that rippling through our society that we better address because to be globally competitive or great, we better educate our children. Mm -hmm. We better pay each of them, every last one of them. And when you have a parent like Miss Harris, you know, that's a, that's a much easy, you know, it's a, it's a very easy process to assist her. Now, in Buffalo, homeschool parents uh, have not, of recent, received, you know, resources. Uh, this this superintendent has recognized homeschool students with, with an ID because we had, again, truancy became a revenue stream in Buffalo. Truancy, when the, the kid is late in school, we have people now that are truancy officers, and that could trigger too much truancy can now, as you see, can trigger um, CPS investigation. Because I believe in this situation, when the trail of document is reviewed, when Ms. Mm -hmm. Harris sent those documents into the district, they didn't come back and take the kids until the next month, but they immediately began the investigation. So the clock started, the meeting started taking maybe eight days after she had a document signed. So mm -hmm. somewhere absences were, you know, absences were accruing. Well, if the absent, you know, if the principal at the schools were told the kids are no longer uh, students at their school, then, those, then that absentee argument is gone because from de December 7th and 14 days prior, that's all that's fun in the notice of intent to homeschool in, in their lives. The parent is noticing the district. They're not asking the district for anything. They're saying to the district, you can't have my children educated. I'm educating them. And so the let, let, me ask you, let me ask you something. Uh, it was my understanding that um, Ms. Harris was also uh, talking with other parents. I'm, I'm sorry, Fred Light. I'm sorry. This is Scotty, the engineer, breaking in. We're at the top of the hour. Um, I don't know um, why y'all not able to hear the music, but we do need to take our station identification break. Excuse me. Thanks, Scotty, and we'll be right back. You're listening to the Mind, Body, and Spirit Radio Show, and we'll be right back after this break. Stay tuned. Black Talk Radio since 2008, providing new black media for the masses. And we're back here at the Mind, Body, and Spirit Radio Show tonight. It is March the 1st, 2017. And it is a uh, beautiful night here in Houston, Texas, but it is not so beautiful in Buffalo, whereas Sister Kiara Harris has had her children uh, taken away from her through this ridiculous, ri ridiculous system. And this is just unbelievable. When I first heard the story, I, I just, I said, this, 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 this system is crazy, and it's nefarious. It's, it's disgusting to have these children taken away from a mother who's only uh, desirous of homeschooling her children because the children are in a failing uh, school district. Uh, we have Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Red 
Am I pronouncing yes. your name properly? Yes, ma'am. That's, it's Franklin Red. Yes, ma'am. Frank, Franklin Red. And you are with the Homeschool Association there in Buffalo? Well, we, I'm with the District Parent Coordinating Council, and mm -hmm. we're a government organization that um, uh, I am the chair of the Homeschool Committee. And you're, um, you've been giving us uh, just the background to her story and also sharing sharing with us just her experience, how the charges have been uh, compounded. Just, uh, it's just incredulous because she was charged with um, uh, a charge that made no sense initially for her to be harassed um, for neglect. And right. now, so she has to fight an obstruction of justice charge because she didn't want to surrender her children. So at right. this point, the children have been separated from her, but they were with the grandmother, correct? Yeah. Uh, are, they, are they still with the grandmother? And is the grandmother receiving any assistance? You know, I, I, I'm not sure. I, I, I can't t t say definitively, but I don't believe so. That's not been something that's been in any of the conversations. And she was given temporary, you know, the, the, the judge who who placed the children, who took them from the institutional placement and, mm -hmm. and temporarily awarded kinsmen, you know, custody to the grandmother, who had been previously rejected by the initial, you know, uh, judge. Uh, and the same judge who told her she couldn't use her Facebook and, you know, who also, um, you know, this motion or petition before the judge, you know, should have been dismissed because it was sufficient at its, at its you know, onset. Uh, the, the grandmother has the temporary kinsman custody right now for two grandchildren. Uh, the family is just, you know, this is so it's distressful for the children because they had the experience of being institutionalized um, through being placed uh, in in, uh, a foster, in, a, in, a, in a foster care agency outside of the city of Buffalo and, you know, for five days not allowed to talk to any of their family members and transferred to a school that's outside of the district of, you know, that's outside of the city of Buffalo. So the family's experienced, you know, every sort of, you know, intrusion mm -hmm. um, from, from Ms. Harris being passed up. And, you know, you had asked the question before the station break. Ms. Harris was very involved in the community. And, and, and within our Afrocentric community, our community expressing our culture, she's a part of many groups. And our children are, are known in these groups as very proactive, you know, participants in the cultural events, the cultural expression. And um, Ms. Harris was also involved with other parents who were enthusiastically and eagerly engaged in, you know, guiding their children's education mm -hmm. and, and schooling their children. So there's an ecosystem that, that, you know, is feeling this disruption also. I mean, it's amazing that people are just starting to consider the children that were in the classrooms with Ms. Harris' children they have to be feeling the psychological, you know, weight of this because one day your friend is there, next day your friend is gone, and you see on the news that your friend's mom was arrested and that child goes home and asks their parents, can that happen to us? I mean, our children are being exposed, you know, on a classroom basis, a citywide basis. This is something that, you know, the psychological environment is not conducive to learning and progress and growth. But yeah. she, she very much yeah. productive person in the community. Mm -hmm. um, I do want to touch back on that. Uh, Father Light, you had a question uh, as we were going to break. Do you want to continue? Uh, yes, yeah, he just answered it. I wanted to know, were there other parents that um, Ms. Harris was talking to who were considering homeschooling? Were there, were there, were there a group of them homeschooling and were they, was it growing? Because the reason why I ask this question is because the fact that they they uh, attacked her so quickly, you say with less than the 14 days, it was like eight days. Um, right. It seems to me that they had their eyes on her from the beginning. It seems to me that they were watching her moves, that they were, someone was letting the right people know what her actions were because the paperwork did not have enough time to go through all the hands, as you said, for them to, to react so harshly the way they did. 
it it it, it, it just appears to me that that when these women, these black women, are attacked the way they are, it's it's not just like, hmm, let's see, I think I'll get her. I I, I believe that they're being watched. I believe that, that there's paper trail, they're seeing what they're doing, oh, this is a troublemaker. And like you said, it's a business. And and this is one person that's messing up the line of business. This is business to them. Our children are chattel to them. Our children mean nothing to them and except for money in their pockets. And and, and so for it's African women in this society today, it 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 stripping in front of people in front of the children. It's 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 as if like you were saying back in in slavery days, the the African woman they feel we don't have to respect her. Like you said, uh, Mother Dunning, uh, how dare you talk back to me? You're an African woman. You mean nothing. And it just reminds me of all these these cases that just keep popping up. Many of them we don't even hear about of women who are trying to do good things for their children and then get arrested. Right. I, I would agree with Penalized. you. Penalized. I would agree with you that for 450 years they've been watching African women, especially on this continent, because of what they bring to the table. And I, and I certainly yes. must be the part of a community of, you know, women and, and, and adults who, you know, cherish their children and want to, you know, provide for their children so that they would be healthy adults. And I know that she promotes it. And I know that, you know, you know, we've all had challenges in life, and she's overcome, and she's persevered, and she's, she's pushed forward, and, you know, she always finds a way to take that next step. And, and when you're like that, this society isn't going to respond kind to that, you know. And, and she certainly is someone who um, was... was engaged in sharing education and the value of education with right. other mothers and their children. And so I, I believe mm -hmm. that's something that, you know, definitely draws attention. You know, you, you asked me earlier for um, the fund, you know, the legal fund, because that's something that's really important. You know, and I think people mm -hmm. in this situation, I hope everyone out there, I don't, you know, whatever it is you, you have to give, that you give it, because this is not one of those situations where you have to wonder, What's the motivation behind the person, you know? And right. Miss Miss Harris didn't do this for money. There's no way she could have orchestrated it first thing. This is something that was thrust upon mm. her. But the legal, you know, the, the, the legal machine still has to be confronted. And to do that, you have to have legal counsel. And to have legal counsel that, that's representative of you, you need to, it's got to be sustainable for them. So um, I do have... Um, the, the correct um, PayPal uh, information for Ms. Harris, if I can get that now. Um, Please, if you could share that. So everybody... And, and, and it's PayPal... Please have your writing utensil or phone I'll to record. Right. We're ready. All right, it's P-A-Y-P-A-L dot M-E forward slash K-I-A-R-R E. And that'll and that'll get you to where if it's if it's if it's upon your heart to, to share with her and, and lift some of this burden and, and any part of the burden lifted exhale. So if you just got a penny that's great. Um, but it but if, well, if, if you everyone could just at least donate five dollars. If, if, if 100,000 people donate $5, she would have $500,000 immediately. And, and let, me, let, me just say, let me just say this, and then we'll get back to, to, to raising funds for this, this woman. She desperately needs it. We, yes. as a group, yes. really, really need to support one another, not just by talking but by giving financial support, as other groups do. Now, when Zimmerman was going to trial, I have some figures here I wanted to share. He raised $314,000, okay? I don't know how much he raised in, like, a short period of time. It was very quickly he had $5,000. But he raised over 
hundred thousand dollars, and his wife, his ex-wife, wife gets four thousand three hundred dollars per month in living expenses from this money that people just willingly gave. Daniel Holdsclaw, who killed Michael Brown, seven thousand three hundred and ninety dollars. That's just mm, in like nine days. Nine days exactly. Seven thousand three hundred dollars. Five hundred thousand dollars on GoFundMe for um, what was this other guy's name? It it just it just amazes me how many people out there are willing to donate money for someone who has killed someone else. I won't even say murdered. Killed someone else when this woman is trying to do the best she can for her children and is going through all of this. There are no words to describe what she is going through. Not seeing her children, being stripped of her dignity, these cases that she has to go to this court and then has to go to this court. She needs our support. I've given and I'm going to give again. But like Black Rose said, give something. We really, really, really need to help each other out. And then we wonder why no one respects us because we're not respecting ourselves by, by helping each other. We've got to do this. I appreciate you for saying that because I've watched her in court have the judge say to her, just for that, we to reach out and use her Facebook to let everybody know what was going on that she couldn't fight any other way. She used every means to fight this, and, and I have not seen her. And it is so good that she did do that because that's how her story began to circulate. Because I think yeah. Delta, I think you mentioned it to me, and I just heard about it. And people have begun to really uh, um, discuss her story because it's, this is just unbelievable. It's unbelievable, but then again, like I say, this, I know that this happens because Delta, yeah. you want to just give a brief, brief summary yeah. of your story, and then, so, um, Mr. Red, if you could definitely come back and and give us an update on how Miss uh, Sister Harris is uh, handling this case and what else the community uh, could do to assist her in any kind of way. And def please, please, people, donate. I am trying to log on to my PayPal right now so that I can donate. So if, if all of us could just give whatever you can, $5, 10 20 100 1000 uh, Beyonce, you may want to go ahead on and take over her legal fees. Some help this sister. Since this is the, the year of women and rise and women power, powerful women and women having power, taking back their power, let's help this sister take back her power. Exactly. She's Really and we need the brothers to stand up for the sister. Oh, my God. Let me try to keep typing in my password. Uh, Delta? Yes. I, so, do you have any uh, advice? Yes. Uh, my number one advice is, and I hope that um, Kiara Harris can hear mm -hmm. me tonight. That is the number one goal, is to try to break your wheel. They want to break your will because they want you to stop fighting. And you have to keep fighting. And I know it takes finance because when I started to fight it for my granddaughters, it is a big expense. So I'm hoping someone, like we saying, hear our voice, please step up and help this young lady because I had some people to step up and help me. And this is how I met my friend right here that's doing the radio show, my friend who owns the radio show. The different ones, they stepped into my life and began to help me and circulate my story around. So I'm telling you, it's something that don't happen overnight. 
but you cannot give up, young lady. Keep them fighting because they know that if they break you, the case is over. Do not let them break you. I'm not going to tell you it don't get hard. I just want to tell her to encourage her. I'm not going to tell you it's not going to get hard. Yes, it's going to get hard along the way. It got very hard with me along the way. There are some days I laughed and there are some days I cried. But I continued to fight and fight until I couldn't fight anymore. And what I mean, I had exhausted every means every mean I could in order to get my granddaughters. So I'm telling you, this is their goal is to try to break you. And they Well, I don't think this. that they're going to break her. I don't think that they're going to break her because she is going to have people like yourself.